What's up, Spurs fans? This is Wes the King here. Here's my thoughts on our 6 2 win over Leicester. Boy, what a crazy game! That was a crazy game. Um, Sanchez was talking about Sanchez. Sanchez, of course, doing what Sanchez does and pretty much gave a penalty to Leicester. Uh, Larice saved the first one. Um, it got called back because he was off the off the line, and um, of course, when you take a second one, we got a striker like that in the Premier League or any type of professional league. They're always going to make the second one and make sure they don't miss it. And you know, and yeah, uh, you know, you got to wonder. You know, Sanchez got to be thinking. You know, is uh, is he just unlucky, or you know, are you just really doing this? Because you know, come on, get a chance like this to play. <clears throat> And you do that is ridiculous, you know. And then you wonder why you're getting the hate that you usually get, and why you got such a bad reputation with the fans when they ever, when they, whenever time they see you come into the lineup, you know. So that just puts even more dampers on um, on Sanchez. Luckily, but I have to defend Sanchez a little bit because one thing about him is he kept with it. He kept with it. He didn't let it bother him too much. It bothered him the first couple minutes afterwards, of course, because you're feeling the effects from the fans and everything. And then plus you're at home. But later on in the game, he did get continually better. And Ariel, he was very dominant aerially and could have got a goal um, that got disallowed, which I think should not have been disallowed. So I have to give him a little bit of credit for him at least working through it. You know, you have to give him some credit for that. Um, the talent is there. I, I saw how his defensive work and what he was doing, making sure he was covering the right um, 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 passageways and all that. You know, I was really looking at him because um, I knew people, I already know what people are going to say. People are going to be like, you know, he's trash, get him out of here, I'm sick of him, yada, yada, yada. Me, I'm looking at what I, I think Conte sees, and I'm seeing what Conte sees in him. It's just that he has, it, it's just crazy that he has those mistakes in him. You know, because if he didn't, he'll be a very much solid backup. And I think he is a solid backup. And he is going to be seeing more playing time the more the season progresses because we have cup games coming up, you know. We're not going to be able to play Romero every game. I'm sorry, guys, we're not. So you're going to have to cheer um, our players on, cheer guys like Sanchez on because we're going to need them. And if his confidence is already low because he knows the um, fans doesn't like him or doesn't fancy him or doesn't rate him, What's the point? You know that he's not going to play as hard. You know, but I like that he put, he played through it, even though he made a horrible mistake, especially in the first couple minutes of the game. And he knows that, and I'm sure the coaching staff is going to get on him, and you know, yada 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 for that. Um, let's get into formations. I really like when we changed three five two in the second half. I really like three five two. Three five two is our formation. That's our formation, especially flow-wise. Our flow, our passing, was 10 times better when we went to 352. It's like it was natural. It's like these guys, it's like these guys played this specific formation their whole entire career. And they just know it like the back of the like the back of their head, you know. The passing we were doing. It, it we did the like uh, prime to, I know we're going against Leicester. We're going against a team that's not good at all and that we should be doing that too. But just looking at tactically how we're passing the ball, how we're using the formation to our advantage, that formation fits our play style. It fits our players too. And we got so many players that we can, that Conte could easily put in that system and they'd be able to go and do what they need to do. I think he even does good wonders for Real. I think Real even plays better in a 3 5 2. Um, because I don't think he, he's not really going to be seen to be going up that. He can be a little bit more defensive and not have and not be the one blamed for not doing anything offensively. Because when you're doing it in 3-4-3, he's more the focal point when putting crosses in the box. If you notice, when we turn to 3-5-2, it's Ventacor who was going up, which I wanted to see. I told people that Ventacor should be going up more than Hoiberg. And you see the, the, the greatness that Ventacor can do when he has that freedom. And the attack, because he does this for Argentina all the time. He does this. He does this on a daily basis for Argentina. It's crazy, um, you know. And that's the goal he scored. Come on, I know a lot of people gonna forget that goal because of how Son got the hat trick in the second half. But I don't think a lot of people should forget that 
Bentecourt scored a very needed goal in a very important moment of the game in the second half. Shout out to Bentecourt. He would have got man in the match if it wasn't for how Son came in and completely obliterated Lister in just a matter of 30 minutes, you know. Hat trick all the way live. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I really like the 3 5 2. Uh, I, I already know. Um, I think guys like Irish and stuff gonna be like, no, I don't think. I think we should stick to the three four three. I think not. I think three five two. It, it, we showed that last year against even with a, uh, we we had a lower quality team even last year. And when, but when we play with three five two, it's like things were natural. Things were natural. Um, I think the only thing we have to worry about is our back line. Of course, our back line looks shaky, man. I mean, dire. But I can't even get on Dyer really because Dyer he was saying some green. Like look at that cross he did all the way to the other side of the left side of the of the pitch, man. He, Dyer can play. I need to stop getting on him, man. Like Dyer can play. You know, it's not most of these most of the stuff that was going on today was not his fault at all. You know, we had different players playing, switching out different sides with um with the wing backs. You know, he had a different partnership with Sanchez, and then he had to play Romero. You know, come come on, you can't get on him. Long lay really short up the left side, so we know he's a keeper. Romero came back in. You already know what Romero does. He, uh, of course, he was an upgrade over Sanchez. But to me, I think he has some type of nagging injury, and that's why Conte decided to have him come off the bench. Um, if he started, I don't think we would have never had any of the problems that Sanchez did at the beginning of the game. But Dyer is solid. You know, there's a reason why he's getting called back up to the national team for England. You know. So uh, I, I think it can be it can be fixed, but he's just Conte just has to put the right lineup right off the jump. He can't hope that the players he's pick does what he wants. You know, he got to just go in and use the players he got and somebody who hasn't had a chance to play. Um, Royale, I'm sorry. Immediately when Royale came out there, he went. He's better defensively, but you saw that there was no more attack on our right side after he came on. Until we changed to a three-five-two, because Basum, um, because Basum and Benton Kerr kind of took over that right side and uh, helped him out a lot. But and when we were just playing a normal three-four-three three with um, when we all subbed in, we had nothing going through for that right side. Um, you know, I, I don't rate him. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep on saying it until he's off and not really playing as much. Until we finally replace him and somebody takes over his spot, I'm gonna keep on saying it until everybody gets sick of me saying it. I'm done with Royale. I'm done with him. He's not good enough to play that kind of position and do what we need him to do. Look at when we had Perisic and Cesc on as our white wing backs. For some reason, a lot of people saying Cesc played badly. Cesc did not play bad at all to me. He did exactly what we wanted what we wanted the wing back to do. Try to attack the box, put crosses in, uh, do some dynamic passing to our forwards, and he did that. Did he score anything? Did he do a worldy um, pass that got an assist? No. But was he doing what we need to do to have the defense be on the heels? Yes. And that's what we need. And here's the thing. We were doing that on both sides. We weren't just doing that on one side, which is usually the left. We were doing it on both sides because even Perisic was doing great at right wing back, and that's not his natural even position. He played a right, but he prefers the left. And he was playing very excellently. I like having technical players that can actually play wing back on both sides that opened up the 343 a whole lot better so i'm fine if we do keep doing the 343 but if we're going to do a 343 we got to put the right wing backs out there on both sides it cannot have a defensive player who really is just a right back play right wing back and expect him to do what the left side of wing back is doing because if both sides of our wing backs aren't doing what we need them to do attacking the box crossing being dynamic with the passing to the forwards, then we're going to struggle and we're going to struggle passing. It's going to make us lethargic. It's going to make us slow. And we're going to end up playing like we've been playing the last three games and like how we did against Sporting and Marseille. We're going to start this lethargic crap again. And that's what I don't want. Put the right players out there. If you uh, understand that um, Paris was kind of getting beat out um, a lot with pace. Um, you know, that's going to probably only be the only problem about Perisic is that he just doesn't have the pace he used to have a couple years back because he's older now. But the technical side is still absolutely there. So it's kind of worth it. You know, in my opinion, it's worth it because of his technical ability. He's smart enough to know um, and he's aware to know when to fall back and when not to um, and when to kind of attack too much and when not to. 
he's been around long enough to know and I feel like he can figure that side out and he was doing very well um, at right wing back I kind of want to see it again. I want to see if we're, we're going to go do a do a three four three. Then it has to be Sess at the left, and then we have to put Perisic at the right. Or, you know, I didn't really like Sess when he switched him out and put Sess on the right. You know, I don't think Sess, you know, Sess kept on going to his left foot more. Uh, I think he's I think he's a right footed player. If he is he a left footed player, I think he's a, I think he's a right footed player. So it's kind of weird that you know he mostly want to use his left. Um, I think if I might I might be wrong on that, but. You know, I, I, I prefer having Sess and Perisic, have Perisic on the right, of course, um, in a 3-4-3. But preferably, in dream world, I want a 3-5-2. Point blank, I want a 3-5-2. And if, if it's not going to be Pasuma at Cam, then Kulisevsky, of course, at Cam. And um, switch out Richarlison and Son whenever you want to, or Richarlison and Kane, whenever the, uh, whenever the um, strategy come to mind. Um, you know that's our formation is three five two. I'm you know I, at this point I I see it, it right when he put that out there. He said go to three five two. We started playing excellent. The passing everybody knew where to be. Our defense was a little bit more shored up when we did a three five two because it pretty much goes into a back five.